five, four, three, two, and Jason. This is episode number 16 of DevRanch WordPress Plugin Dependency Confusion. WP All Import works with all XML and CSV files. You can import images and you can easily import data into plugins and theme fields or anywhere else you need it. With WP All Import and export with ease, even schedule it too. Check them out at WPAllImport.com. <laughs> That's Steve Zangit. I find uh, Steve Zangit on know. the internet. Whatever. You guys know who I am. And you all know who it is. It's your boy Jason Cosper, aka Fat Mom. We're back at it again on the number one WordPress podcast. Speaking of podcasts, leave us a review. Maybe not on this episode, but leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. <laughs> and lastly, go over to Discord. Go to wpwaterforcom slash Discord. And uh, you can make fun of us over there. We really appreciate that. So we have a friend on the show. Hey, hey. Pat. Hey, how's it going, Robert? How you doing? I'm good. Good. Awesome. It's Robert, could you give us a, a quick little intro? Who you are, what you do, all that fun? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, my name is Robert Raleigh. I'm the security advocate for Patch Stack. Uh, I have been working in the information security field for close to around two decades now, and I've known. Jason over there for much longer than that. Uh, and right. I've enjoyed, I've been a huge supporter for open source, working at DreamHost, Pagely, and I've also broken open source while I worked at Trustwave and, and other companies. Very cool, very cool. Cosper, how did we, how did we get to this, this topic that we are gonna be discussing today? What was the origin of this? You gave yeah. me like this rundown and I was like, oh man, yeah, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Cosper explain this rundown. Yeah. <laughs> like, who was the originating post? Like, how did this? So uh, back in, gosh, I want to say early earlier 2021, there there was this whole idea of dependency confusion that came out from Alex Burson. Is that right, Robert? think so the track tickets uh, yeah. go a bit longer though <laughs> more history but this uh, the initial the idea of it yeah it goes back a lot further but the kind of name for it is this novel supply chain attack happened against apple microsoft and a bunch of other companies back in early february of this year and the write-up from alex Bersan was like here is how I did it, everything else, but basically, and I can let Robert take the ball on this one, they were spoofing packages that like a lot of people used to basically insert scripts into in into very large parts of infrastructure and it can be done basically with WordPress too, which is was where Robert comes in. Yeah. Did you want to give like the quick rundown? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that... <laughs> you're you're the, you're the professional here. I just talk bullshit. You're the professional. So <laughs> professional. You're, professional. Yeah. you're way too endearing. You can tell from our intro. It was great. Yeah. The whole idea of this. Dependency confusion is basically a, a naming conflict of for libraries or software that you're updating or managing on your site or that your site or software relies upon. And the conflict can happen when you have a local de development version and then you have a package management service, which is like a cloud service and for the WordPress world. This would be like the plugin repository. And when your local dev version, which doesn't have basically has like your awesome plugin name installed on it, that should be fine until an auto updater runs. And if the auto updater runs and looks for the official plugin repo to say, hey, is there an update for my awesome plugin? And it finds an update, it might just apply that update. And if your update, if your code was never intended to be ran or updated from the WordPress plugin repo, this can be where like the confusion starts. Which one is the right plugin? Where's the source of truth, right? Where, sh what, what should we do here? And the updater, until I think around 
WordPress 5.8 would just default to updating to whatever was on the plugin repo. And uh, this is where the 5.8 update, which was released in July this year, basically added new functionality, which kind of helps out a lot of plugin developers, especially plugin developers who are doing custom plugins, like bespoke plugins for their clients, things like that can help do some mitigation strategy, right? Change a, a one field in their, in their plugin, one line of code will help prevent the risk of somebody later uploading a conflicting name or a confusing dependency to the WordPress plugin repo and cause sites to basically, we can assume they're going to break because I highly doubt that they're, 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 they're pushing valid updates to your bespoke code. Uh, but that's basically how, generally how it works. I can do a, a good little example too. I did a write-up for the Patch Stack Weekly, which includes a nice little write-up. Uh, do you guys want me to go through that or any other questions? Yes. Okay. So the header you were, the header you yeah. were talking about is what was it? Update your uh, URI, Correct. right? Correct. Yeah. Update URI header, which is part of the plugin headers. And if you set that to false, it won't even check the repository. Correct. Is that what it is? And then, but you can also set it to say a GitHub repo, an EDD endpoint, something like that. Host. Yeah. Yeah. And what it so, will do, it'll extract the host name from that. Right. And then calls an action. Which is, this is all great. I'm actually curious, like we've talked previously on this show uh, and we can get into to things a little more in depth about null plugins and these like null plugin clubs where you don't know what's coming along with this uh, plugin that's been like the updates, the licensing, etc., has been stripped out. Could I, I don't want to be uh, sensationalistic here. I don't want to, to poke any bears, but could an update URI be inserted if you buy a null plugin that basically says, oh yeah, check this server for updates, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And then at some point, yeah, at some point in the future, uh, a <laughs> an update can get pulled down to your site that inserts whatever the null plugin club. Yeah, right. that's, a, that's a possibility. Yeah. Part of the 5.8 update includes this new filter, or is it an action, which is the, uh, well, it's a filter. Uh, it applies the filter called update underscore plugins underscore, and then it extracts the host name. And uh, the old plugin clubs theoretically could start managing their own updates. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, I'm not sure. But the, the key point here is that for the non-wordpress.org repository plugins, this is a key function to know to include in your code now. So, yes. you can, so your code can properly update and won't try to update from the wordpress.org repo and it'll update how you want your code. Yeah. This is a problem when you can, when you allow side loading, you can essentially side load a, a whole new plugin and, and bring it in and then have it wait for the updates. And then if, if the slug's the same, then you're going to end up with that updated. Th that null plugin scenario that you just brought up, Cosper, that's super interesting. That, that could, <laughs> that could wreck some havoc if, if you, that, away. and that's why we said in that episode like uh, screw null plugins don't be a cheapskate if you w need the functionality buy the actual plugin because you're just setting yourself up for a future scenario where things can go south real fast and next thing you know, your site is part of the botnet yeah. or you won't even know it's part of the botnet just is right uh, absolutely so I, what is it that people can do as a site owner and then as a developer? What can they do to either mitigate this or to determine what... I know that there's plugins that will detect some of this stuff. I think you were involved in some of those, if I remember correctly. What can they do? What can folks yeah. do to work through this? Yeah, I would say the number one thing is I want to get ahead of this is don't fear the updates. An update is not a bad thing. Steve, Most yes. of the time, those are helping out. <laughs> Steve, uh, 
But uh, after... I have yeah. nothing constructive to add. <laughs> so, that's why I made the point. Uh, but after the, uh, after that aspect, the updates are important. Is two is, is ensure that if you're using WordPress.org repository, you're actually pretty much, if you're using all plugins from WordPress.org, you're, you're pretty solid, right? The, the default behavior is to look at WordPress.org for the plugin updates. Your plugins are updating from the same source. But if you start using plugins from other sources or custom developing plugins, and then you're going to have to start considering it, right? If you're pulling in plugins from theme for or your themes from theme forest or plugins from other res resources, you got to make sure you can check yourself as the site owner. Does this have this update URA header? Does this look good? And, uh, and maybe if you're pulling down old plugins, if you just are that type of person, I mean, I really hope you're really good at reading code because you're going to want to validate everything in that piece of code to make sure it's looking good and it's not doing anything. To now, you said you should check yourself. Should you do that before you wreck yourself? Because I'm just curious. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. You don't wreck, you wreck yourself, I guess. The, bo the bots wreck your site for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, so there we have this new header that's been added in, and that 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 sounds all fine and good, but there has to be, like... I don't know, this whole system is set up to, with a level of trust. And we had this whole discussion at the beginning here with NPM modules and having someone who just goes, oh, I don't want to deal with this anymore. And then you just get rid of them. The, the same sort of thing could happen with this, right? You could have somebody who has a very popular plugin. They get tired of having that popular plugin. And instead of putting it up for adoption they just delete it and now the slug is just floating out there and someone can grab that slug and run with it right or or, or your favorite example where a plugin gets sold jason and initially it's about what changing or, add, or giving people custom user icons if they don't want to use a gravatar and then all of a sudden your site has turned into some sort of membership site just because the person who bought this Gravatar plugin turned it into a whole membership plugin. Like, none of us would run this plugin though. You're basically they're hijacking the slug at that point. Yeah. 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 And there's some, there's some people that we've even seen them where you let, you see the, you see that slug and you're just like, wow, they got that. Like, Facebook? Like, really? Like, they, they were able to get that name? Wow, look at you. And, and it's some, like, really janky whatever. But there's some that are out there where you're just like, wow, this person really was able to... They came in early, and they got this really great slug, and now they're they're running with it. Yeah, or they came in early, they got this great slug, just like the .com the domain name Rush, and then they're just sitting on it now to try to sell it to the, to the highest bidder. Well, it's real estate. Yeah. Becomes yeah. a... Yeah, it becomes a commodity. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, it's definitely the the. I don't know if you guys mentioned the whole plug-in slugs can be taken over or sold, and that's uh, something I've seen directly as well. Uh, compromised sites after the fact, where a plugin was sold, the developer wasn't doing anything with it. Suddenly, somebody came with came in with an offer for a few grand. That sounds great. Unfortunately, there's uh, harm, but they're gonna that person's gonna make that money back. And normally it's by doing some malicious stuff on websites. Yeah, I, I was going to say in not only your current job, but in previous jobs, haven't you sniffed out some of those plugins that have gotten taken over, Robert, if I recall correctly? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Just part of the job. <laughs> doing monitoring of plugins to make sure that they're getting updated when there's security updates, getting uh, purging plugins from a whole network of customers is something that I've had to do when the plugin author was clearly, I don't know the right nicest word to say, maybe gone off the rails. Sure. When they do something that's completely that never like- happened. That never so, happens. Except that, for well, all No, times. Steve, that's, <laughs> that's because we don't use rails. We use PHP. Right. It's a different setup and everything look, else. Look, but... I, I know this is the developer track and I know Robert, you're a developer, so you know how to do this, but is there a way for the lay person to be able to, to do this themselves? Is there any, are there any plugins or monitoring systems that are out there that can detect what you're talking about 
for site owners. What uh, I coincidentally work for Patch Tech, which releases, uh, uh, which has a plugin that is available in the WordPress.org repository. And we do security notifications for all of our customers. It'll appear in your WordPress app dashboard. If you want to pay a little bit more, we've got an awesome little SaaS app that allows you to get notifications for all sorts of security issues. But the key thing is, though, is that this gives you, this empowers site owners to know when one of their plugins, it has a known vulnerability in it. If a plugin gets hijacked and it's now malicious, considered malicious code, that will now appear to that the site owner who has, who's running the patch stack app or patch stack plugin on their WordPress website, knowing that they've got to do something about this. And even better is for the customers that pay a little bit more, we have a, a web application firewall, which automatically applies rules, which will protect the site as best as we can against some malicious activity. Now, again, I'm, I'm asking this, I, I already know this answer, but I'm asking this for the layperson. is if a, if a, a plugin is hijacked, let's just use that word because that's what we, how we've been describing yeah. it on this, on the, on, on the water cooler so far, is that code compartmentalized to just that plug? So meaning as long as I deactivate it, I'm, I'm in the clear or can they do more permanent damage to the site and to the rest of the code? Let's say if a plugin is hijacked and you would think that deactivating the plugin would dis disable the functionality of the, the PHP files, but reality is you can still access those PHP files directly. So a really, an attacker, depending on the attack method they use, could upload a backdoor at some specific specified path and be able to reactivate their, or either access to the site. So the ideal thing is always to remove those plugins or have a web application firewall, which can disable access to those endpoints. Okay. So let's take it a step further. All right. I, I hear what you're saying. Now I've now deactivated and I've removed the plugin. Yeah. Can the plugin leave a trace of itself even after I've removed the, just the files for that plugin? We, we can go down this road all day long. You read it for <laughs> But at that point in time, it's no longer part of that piece of code. It's that, no longer part of that plugin code. It could infect other pieces of code. And there's been some really interesting attacks, which I've seen, where they can jump around the place. A lot of the compromised sites will have a little line added to every PHP. File. So you got to think you got to clean them all up. And I wrote some tooling to do this before. Big pain in the butt. But the, there's also methodologies where it can only update one, one file, and then it hops around the file that's being malicious. So there's always a way for attackers to be there and you always want to be able to, to do thorough cleanups or go to the straight to the server layer and live outside of WordPress and start scanning everything on the server layer. So that would be more leaning towards the hosting. Now the code jumps around, but does it jump up and get down? <laughs> I don't know the rest of the lyrics. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I'm on a, I'm on like a rap lyric kick today. <laughs> You're just, I, I you're believe softballs. <laughs> they, they just say jump, jump, jump after jump. that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's the last, that's the last question I'll ask about compartmentalizing code. That's all I had. All right. Is that crisscross by the way? No, that's house no. of pain. House of pain. <laughs> that's <laughs> house of pain. Embarrassingly, Chris, Chris the, first, jump. embarrassingly the house of pain CD is the first CD I ever bought with my own money that should you should be embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> Mine was uh, you too. All right. <laughs> I'm embarrassed that I knew what the Chris Cross song was. Right. Like that. <laughs> so you you were talking about some uh, command line stuff that you could run as well. One of the links that we were putting in our show notes is that there's a WP update confusion Python script that you could run. They'll go through and uh, check all these things as well. So there are things that are out there that you could run yourself if you wanted to set some stuff up and run through it and see how um, how this is uh, happening. But yeah, there's a lot of different ways to go through and approach this. Yeah, there's the link in the, hopefully it'll show up in the show notes. Yeah, for the absolutely in confusion Python script. Yeah, yeah. There, there is a whole, I, I know since this is like our more developer focused show, hopefully uh, a number of you out there are a little more familiar with command line stuff with things like that. Something that just got acquired by automatic WP scan is uh, a, a fantastic 
tool to audit your own effectively and figure out where if you're not if, if, if you're not going to use something like the patch stack plugin that's available in the WordPress repository uh, that you can figure out where some of your vulnerabilities lie it, it actually does a really great job of presenting presenting that information in a, a very plain text fairly easy to understand way so I, I really I, I gotta give it a shout out to them definitely I, th I think you've done some work with them as well Robert yeah yeah, yeah. the VPCN guys are, are great guys That's and awesome. that piece of code's been around for forever basically yeah. right. and it was the premier piece of software that could and what's cool what's different is that it re remotely can detect a lot of the plugins that you have installed and the themes you have installed and then compares that against the WP scan database to find out for known vulnerabilities that, and that's a difference between patch stack, which lives on your site. So if you can't install it on the site, you can always run P WP scan. Maybe you just don't, if you're a developer, you don't have time to install some app or a plugin on all your test sites, then run WP scan, right? right. You can pre-feed it with a lot of data or just go to wpscan.com or patchstack.com slash database and type in every one of your plugins by hand. If you're into just making the work as hard as possible. Maybe you have an intern and you're just trying to figure out like something for them to do. Hey, go ahead, do a little, a little typey typey and figure out what's up. This is related, but, but not exactly what you're bringing up. I had a, a, a friend, not a client, but a friend called me recently and say my WordPress site, I haven't, I haven't maintained it in a while, but all of a sudden I have a bunch of Google ads that are appearing on the front end of the site. And what happened was the theme developer just decided to slip in an ad code in the, uh, in the header of the, of the theme and pushed it with an auto update. That's just how it works. So there had nothing to do with what we're describing here. There was no link hijacking. It was just the theme developer decided to make yeah. some extra money by pushing in their own ad tags. Yeah. In, it may actually theme. Steve, because yeah. the slug of a theme, could this also happen with a the theme then? It, it could the same there's, sort of thing happen if, if a theme got updated and it was somebody ditched a theme and now they took over that theme slug? I didn't could, get the impression that this was an actual ditching of the theme. This, this seems is, like the same developer the whole past right. just decided is, to do something yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. malicious. Developer um, gone but, rogue. Yes, basically. sure. Yeah. Or I, I guess rogue what I'm asking is, could this also happen with themes? The yeah. same construct are there. It's yeah. do you have a source, right? Are you validating the same source? Is this theme being updated from the same origin, right? Or not? Mm -hmm. And that's those checks didn't really exist. I this 5.8 update was really only for the plugins. I haven't looked into it specifically for themes. I think mostly because people are pretty hesitant to to update a theme. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It exists in the same I think my point was this had nothing to do with server code. This was just a JavaScript. They decided to slip yeah. in right in the header. And it was just literally just sitting right in the header file in the theme, not even in queued. It wasn't even done properly. It was just pasted right into the header file of the theme and came in through an auto update. Back when I was at WP engine, I used to have to do a lot of, of site cleanups. And in a lot of cases, there were people just inserting a little bit of JavaScript, a little bit of uh, a tiny bit of PHP that then loaded some JavaScript from like one of their also completely hacked sites like down the line. And yeah, so sometimes a developer yeah. can go rogue and, yeah. and do that. And sometimes you have an attacker who just and drops a little J JavaScript yeah, in there. Little, I've seen a little JavaScript turn into a big uh, cookie stuffing campaign where they're just trying to get affiliate link cookies just jammed into a browser. It's amazing to see thousands and thousands, thousands in one, one yeah, little JavaScript. It, this little one line of JavaScript put a Google ad into every single blog excerpt. Yep. Wow. It was, there, were, yeah. there were Google ads all over the Another one that I saw as I was getting out of doing some hack site cleanups was 
people putting uh, JavaScript in that runs like uh, Monero, like mining. Mm-hmm. Mining, yeah. yeah. So basically, mining awesome. these small-time cryptocurrencies. That even if it's just you're doing just the tiniest bit of work through this JavaScript or whatever, that it's just running that in the background and they get enough people visiting the site and okay, you actually have a formidable force generating cryptocurrency for you, basically. Yeah. So you visit the site and you and you just see your CPU processes just go through the roof. Your fan your your fan just starts that's just called using Chrome. But sure. <laughs> <laughs> so true. I've been blaming the tabs, but really it's been Monero miners. <laughs> so going back to what we were talking about at the very beginning here, where we were clearly defining what happens with a, a developer pulling in third-party code to be included into their builds. We, for, for folks that are just installing plugins on from WordPress's repository and getting them onto their site and using those, unless something like we just described would happens there, there's not a whole lot that like the end using develop or end using website owner really needs to worry about or can worry about. But when it comes to the developers themselves, when they're going through and building out their code and, and getting all that set up that this is something that could definitely happen to them. Like we talked about in the past where there's NPM modules that get messed with and things like that. Have we heard of anything else where, where PHP has had this same sort of issue where there's a included library that's being brought in on during build and something nefarious happens? And is that something people should be even worrying about as a developer? I don't know one on PHP itself. There was the only one I can think of is PHP unit had some stuff, but it wasn't at all like this. It wasn't nefarious stuff. It was mm. an old version of PHP unit should not be shipped with uh, your code. It's only your testing environment and people were accidentally shipping them with their code in the WordPress plugins repository too, which was leading to an incident where there was a, a arbitrary code execution. But yeah, I can't think of anyone knowingly as far as like WordPress goes include outside of the little things that we've mentioned. Uh, although I do know there was for, for some time, it still could be the case cause I won't go and touch it, but I know that code Canyon and theme forest and stuff like that, especially theme forest there was a whole run of people inserting old, like vulnerable copies of like a uh, revolution slider and things yeah. like that, where, uh, yeah, yeah. T- Tim thumb, when we had yeah. the Tim thumb exploit, oh, the, those, those the things days. like that. Yeah, yeah. Where it was a surefire way to get your site. Hacked. Yeah. yeah. That, w- that was a, an insecure library that, developers weren't updating within their, their code structure. Right. And so <laughs> right. it's a funny thing where you got to remember that it's a supply chain, right? Like your site's your site, but you're reliant on a lot of people and a lot of other people's code. So yeah, you gotta, gotta keep aware of security issues that are some two, three steps down the chain. They might come up as an issue. So you got to keep an eye on it. To tie it back to developers, uh, say you use composer or uh, you're using Laravel, something like that, you have to make sure that your composer libraries are up to date, that the little bits of the libraries you're using from Laravel, probably also loaded through composer are up to date. As you use JavaScript libraries to, to help you build blocks and things like that, any dependencies that come through NPM or Dino or anything like that, again, you have to make sure that these things are up to date. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I think we talked this one up pretty good. Thank you very much, Robert, for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. We're looking forward to uh, seeing other uh, blog posts that you're putting out and and things that you guys have going on over there at patch stack. So thank you very much for uh, your time and for hanging out with us. No problem. Thank you. I'll post every week on patch. Awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you. 
here's our working outro. <laughs> hey, go over to devhewatercore.com slash subscribe and subscribe to this content. This is Dev Branch. We put this out every month, and WC Watercooler happens on all the other weeks that we don't put out Dev Branch. Go over to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and YouTube. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.